Hello everybody, welcome to Coaching with Vulpes and Coulter, replay analysis. Um, so once we've got, what we've got here is uh, Underworld versus Chaos. The Chaos have three block players and the four block players actually, because one's just blocked, because you can't actually pause it at the start of a turn. And uh, a Rookie Underworld team. The Rookie Underworld team, 12 players, I would have rather had 13 I think somehow, I don't know. How I would have achieved that, but I would have liked 13. Um, interesting interesting decision to put Lime, Ra Lyman on the LOS, but then Goblins exposed the Blitz. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm always conflicted on who to put on the, the line. Yeah, I, I think I think this this would call for somebody who is an actual expert on on Underworld to, uh, to give more input. I personally, I think I would have... The fact he's got block really makes you yeah. want to put the uh, more survival players in the OS. Um, yeah, that was my thinking. But on the other hand, I think he's, yeah, he can get three dice against the goblins, but then the goblins are still armor seven, so it's not like the, the linemen are that much more survivable. But I think if I was going to put the linemen on the LOS, then I would have probably put the throwers blitzable. And, you know, like a rule of five with the, the throwers on the edges, the blitzers in the middle and then the four goblins fully protected because um, I mean he can get a three dice block with block on the goblin now can't he which is likely to be bad times for said <laughs> goblin <laughs> uh, another rule for me is uh, stop playing with uh, stunty teams <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I mean this is it's already it's not like real blood ball <laughs> in a way <laughs> it's a lot it's you know what I mean. It's it's a yeah. it's a very dodgy playing against. No, so he didn't take three dice with block on a goblin. Yeah, I don't think this guy was all that good, honestly. That's he, sh he definitely should have beat me, and I think I misplayed some too, if I remember right. Yeah. So he gets he gets the knock down the troll anyway, at least. I don't think he's made a blitz, has he? Yeah, I guess not. That was a definitely a mistake with the amount of block he has. Yeah. Yeah, he absolutely should have. Uh, he did a did a pass there, so and expose the ball a little bit. Uh, yeah, so he's not. He's not really doing good things, is he? <laughs> so okay. Now so, I feel bad about the draw. <laughs> <laughs> so he, so he went for the blitz on this guy. I mean, he's. You didn't have a down player next to him, did you? So. My, what my 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 thinking here would have been um tr you want to pick up your player uh you got you obviously the troll is pretty much going to stand up there all the time the other players like you want to stand them up where they're not going to get fucked <laughs> right. right i agree with that yeah. Yeah, yeah so so you've got a couple of options you can make a two dice bl you could you could have moved a goblin in into this square blocked uh block this lime beastman without block um and then that could have let you stand up the other the other lineman and then bring in then bring in your block blitz on the on the beast man and then you could end up nobody in contact except the troll uh yeah, and then like some yeah. kind of a some kind of a screen over here a little bit um yeah. so you know i mean he's got the ball over here and you're blitzing away from the ball i like that it will it will result in a warrior isolated on a goblin I mean that is ideal a non-block warrior isolated on a goblin is great because yeah. he might as well be strength 3 against a warrior so like that that's an absolute desirable outcome but it does leave you with how what you do in the middle of the pitch here yeah So yeah, that's not that's not yeah. <laughs> I think I think you moved him there and then realised he wouldn't be a screen anymore. Then moved him back. Wait, say that again. I, th I think you moved him. I think you moved this blitzer. Uh, yeah. Realised it wouldn't be a screen, so then moved him back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean there there you had a free two dice. You know, you just needed to move an assistant two dice. So I think you absolutely had to two dice him there. Um, and then yeah, because you made that blitz, you didn't stand this guy up. 
I, I, I kind of agree with not standing up to just get knocked down again. But, um, but yeah, I don't yeah, think... Yeah, I moves to make him stand up and not get knocked down again. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, that's a quite important, really. Ah, so he, he blitzed him to, to free up the warrior. Who went nowhere. So what he should have done was he should have blitzed with the warrior for three dice since he stopped moving with the beast man and then moved back. And I guess he got scared of there being some men vaguely in the way, so he moved back to the middle. Interesting. Yeah, this guy this guy isn't the best, is he? I think it's safe to say, without being without being horrible to him. Um yeah. So if he's watching, he could he could learn something from this. <laughs> so yeah, bring him in, get the block in. Very good. So yeah, so the first thing you got to think about is where your blitz is going to be on the turn, and you went for over there. What I would have thought about doing here is rather than uh, blitzing over there. Which is fine. It's fine getting a warrior down. You know, don't get me wrong. But you've got a goblin here against a block player. So I would have thought about uh, bringing an assist in in here. Yeah. And then blitz the uh, this beast man. So then you'd have a you'd have a blitzer there. Bring in another player here, and then this goblin would get a two dice him down. So it would give you like an additional yeah. knockdown. It, yeah, that makes sense because that beastman is also. Um Playing a pretty important role, he's kind of able to leverage that side because he's there. So yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So you'd be you'd be blunting his attack a bit, and also just getting more blocks, yeah. minimize the blocks you're taking, and maximize. You see, make, making a dodge there instead of knocking him down potentially. Yeah, I just gotta be able to recognize that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Just just look at everyone who's based, and think how you can use your blitz. To maximize your blocks <laughs> yeah. with any team you know people you'll see a lot of especially on reddit uh, <laughs> yeah yeah you, yeah you just needed pushes to, to do everything yeah um, and yes it would have given him a follow-up block as well yeah if, if that guy had still been there which um, I don't know if he would have been but yeah potentially a follow-up block as well yeah follow-up blocks is very important as well of course this guy's giving away a lot of free blocks too yeah Troll. See, that's the thing. You stand up the troll, and he just gets not like it's horrible, isn't it? I hate even even standing up a strength five armor nine regen player, because if you're standing them up into a into a free block, it's it's just not fun, is it? They can anyone can die if they get blocked. So it's a lot of people are blasé about about that sort of thing, but I really don't hate. I really don't like it. I mean, I would have stood him up there as well. I mean, obviously, I, I would have done it. I just wouldn't have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have liked doing it, but I would have done it for sure. So here you can hit the ball potentially. Um, oh yeah, I also think about the ball a bit as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't forget about preventing your team, the other team from scoring. Yeah, like I don't like one dicing the ball, but I like two dicing the ball. <laughs> and you know, you, you could hmm, you could block free this guy up. He could come there. He could block there. So the goblin could come around to assist somehow. And almost there's almost two dice in the ball there. I mean I don't think there is two dice in the ball there, but there almost is. So yeah, so here you would be looking at how do you maximise blocks? And unfortunately having strength two players not not the best for maximizing blocks, really. Yep. Uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Hmm, it's tricky because you know you you pretty much gonna be forced to be making some goblin dodges here, which I don't really like making goblin dodges. But there's potential to like move this guy in here. This guy, oh, I tell you what, I can do it. I'll give give me this here. All right, wait a second. Potential. Bring this guy over to here. He blocks him. Oh. There's maybe a chain to get to get two dice on the ball, um, isn't there? Because you could have chained this guy to here, 
and then you could have dodged for two dice on the ball. Um, oh, I see that, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's a possibility. Um, but I think I would have probably just move this guy, move that guy over to there, then make this block, which frees him up. Um, so then he could blitz that that beast man, and then run into assist over here. Then he can block this guy down. So you can you can kind of like you can you can make a lot of blocks here relatively safely. Um, and you know if if you like that the Skaven uh, against you basically blunted your drive just by knocking down three swords in one turn, wasn't it? That was. And, and you know it wasn't any positional moves or anything it was just literally getting getting knockdowns and uh, oh yeah, well, no, just make, making enough armor rolls and end up getting some some yeah. removals yeah Oh yeah, so that, that that's good. So that 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 block also gave that give a two D there, which is interesting, isn't it? But yeah, it could have. Oh wow, Dick Splat, <laughs> Baron Dick Splat! <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing! <laughs> Holy shit, that's amazing. Uh, so then, yeah, but, but so you got the blitz and you got the two dice blitz in, so you basically knocked down that guy anyway. Um but took the goblin out of from over here. So I I would have wanted to put the goblin out there to, to screen. That would have been my thinking as well, you know, because like yeah. you've got aha, I can pause it. Um Alright. Because you've got his team is like this, and then your team is like that. And what I would rather have, I would rather have my team be like that. Do you know what I mean? Right. So yeah. he's got a bit of a. Actually, you you quite you even to here, aren't you? So he's he's like this, and and you've got. A, extra round here rather than spreading it out over there which I think spreading it spreading it out further I, I like these two here because they stop a reverse like I don't think that's bad having them guys there or anything or or the exact positioning but just as a whole I've got too many fucking lines in the field now um but as a basic as a basic thing really basically he's got a line and you've got a line that lets him out and I would just rather have a line that was it's still got to go quite far back because you know you don't want him uh you don't want him reversing on you yeah. so i would say maybe this would have been a better line or something um yeah something like that yeah, more or less parallel sense. yeah so something to think about is when you're setting up these assists um what your final formation is going to look at look like as well you know after the yeah. end of the turn yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that. I was that, just kind of throwing people in as assists. I wasn't really thinking of what the final position was going to be afterwards, really, all that much. Yeah, exactly. You 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 didn't blitz with this thrower, which meant that you needed an extra assist for the goblin to block, which meant that that cost you a goblin out here, which would have made it that much harder for him to advance. Yeah. Oh, that guy got cast anyway, so <laughs> the goblin would have been cast if he'd been out there. But still, it would have it would have stopped him getting as far forward as he did anyway. Oh god! See you later, Dave. These beastmen are just numbers. Hugh Janus is uh, is one of his. Warriors. <laughs> okay, I, I completely didn't pay attention that turn. So <laughs> it's, it's tough to understand. Right, I need to rewind a, a, a little bit here and uh, and actually pay attention to the turn rather than looking at his player names. What's the last one? 
grass tastes bad and count fist blast. <laughs> I, I still think I still think Baron Dixblatt's the best. Okay, so this <laughs> <laughs> this turn here, he's uh, he's made some knockdowns. So yeah, so okay, okay, we've got to watch. Sorry, sorry to watch this again as I was just got distracted by looking looking at the player names there. He got pretty lucky there, didn't he? Making making a Kaz and then I mean. Fair enough. He blocked it. He blocked. He blocked a goblin and got a removal. You can't really complain about that. It's. It's obviously. It's not right. ideal. It's not ideal, but it, it's going to happen. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. What eighty-seven. So. Yeah. So. So yeah. So here. This is. So now. This is perfectly. This. This demonstrates the kind of the kind of problem you find yourself in, because now his team is like this, and he's got a bit of a kind of bulkhead, hasn't he? And because you're your one was here. Your little, I've just drawn some balls on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so because you, you know, because <laughs> but it's what it's it's literally what's happened in the game, though, isn't it? He's got this here, and you've got that there, and it's it's in the wrong place. You know, it should have been yeah. here. This is where your concentration of players should have been. Um, yeah. And now you, this turn, you've got to try and and get that concentration of players into that that. So how do you do that? Um, I didn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a blitzer there and a blitzer here. So you haven't you haven't got your safe box anyway. I guess this this guy can block him to free him up, and then he drops back somehow. He can block him to free up the goblin. He can block him, and then yeah, make some dodges or something. But let's see what actually happens. Block with block. It's the knockdown. Very good. Maybe this goblin could block actually, and uh, yeah, so then that frees him up, and then he blitzes. Ah oh, no, he dodged. Yeah, so see, I don't like that dodge because that could have been the the thrower could have blitzed this beast man, and then got himself into a screening position, and then that would have freed up the goblin to get in a screening position. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty poor. And then that goblin could have made his dodge. Yeah. Because you know, obviously, a one in nine, a block, a block has a one in nine chance of failing, the same as the dodge. The difference is you can re-roll the block, so the right. block is 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 way more reliable. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty poor. So yeah, so now and now. You still got this. <laughs> now you, now, now your ball sack's got like the other end of the pitch completely. <laughs> it's a battle. It's a, it's funny because when you get the ball, it is a ball sack, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah. He's getting the he's getting the knockdowns. Little bit lucky against dodge there, isn't he? Rolling the pals. Little bit lucky. And yeah. So now. Started off with a dodge, turn of the dodge, and, and that, now you're reduced to making, remaking. Uh, yeah, it's just desperate at this point. Yeah, desperate. Yeah, and again, he. Yeah, so you see, he's got a team here, and your team is still just milling around here, and it's like, yeah, absolutely lost, complete, completely lost control of the drive. Because what you can do is, if he, if he's pushing down like here, you, you you can leave the door open a little bit. So that then when he pushes, you absolutely slam in like this. And, you know, then he's got to score that turn or whatever. And, you know, you, you've got to try to, if you can't, he, obviously, look, it's not it's not rocket science. I'm not saying anything and anyone doesn't know. Best possibility is you score on his drive. Se second best is he doesn't score. And third best is he scores as soon as possible. So you've got more time. Yeah. So, so that's why I I, sh I favour the like shepherding, shepherding him towards the end zone. Just because stop stopping him scoring is just likely to be more costly in t in in terms of attrition. Now in a in a NAF style tournament, which is why you'll see the likes of Joe Manji um, and the way Spartaco played in the World Cup, they obviously play with zero regard for the player's safety. And they're absolutely going as hard as they can to stop every score. And it also, you'd see it in the game that me and myself and Andy Davo played in the random league, because that was yeah, that yeah. was that was res. 
playing absolutely hard defense, not trying to not give an inch, you know, at all, because you know, and you just don't care if players die in champs ladder and that. Obviously, if you've got an agility fucking five witch elf or whatever, you don't really want to just go. Oh, they'll stand there and scream. <laughs> You know, you're obviously trying to protect your best players, and uh, you know, so it is a that that's a little bit different. Uh, so for like ladder kind of things or leagues, I, I will I will employ the kind of shepherding mentality um, rather than the just stop the touchdown at all costs mentality. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and it is risky as well. Yeah, against especially the Donald It's risky in as well in that if they do score, then it'll be a late score, probably on turn eight. So, so trying to stop them completely is is risky in both player removals and in in just not getting the time to score back. Yeah, especially if you're AV seven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's got a bit of a. That's a bit mad, isn't it? Except you don't have any goblins nearby. So it's not mad. But it would have been fucking mad if, if this had been a goblin. I've, I've done uphill surfs when people don't sideline cages with goblins. Yeah, absolutely. It's not all that unlikely if they don't have block on the ball. No, of course not. I mean, if, if, if you had a goblin here, which obviously, to be fair to him, you don't have a goblin there. So it's not fucking mental. But, <laughs> but if you had a goblin here, oh my god, stop moving the fucking camera cyanide, then it would have been, yeah, quite easy for this Skaven Lino to, to cancel one of the assists, and then a goblin dodges in uphill surfs, and yeah, that would have absolutely been a play. I mean, this is still a one in... I mean, even this play here, which was... You can say that's the right play to go if you're trying to win the game at all costs, because you're 30% yeah. to dodge in, aren't you? And then minus two to surf him. It could happen. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think you were, even even with him not being a goblin, he was still right to go for the uphill surf there. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, VIP Pedro Jack. <laughs> Happy Sunday to you too. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think that was the key thing there. Just that maybe that that crucial turn where he just didn't get people in front of him is what led to losing yeah. control of yeah. the drive. Yeah, that makes sense. Does he still have a full team here or not? Looks like it. Yeah, he's still got a full. So he had a, he had a reserve as well. Versus not many. <laughs> Nine. Maybe maybe ten though for the second half. And maybe a one turn from a goblin throw here. <laughs> I'm not sure I've thrown a goblin, but that's not a whole team yet. Yeah? Oh, sad times. So he hasn't set up to stop the goblin throw. Like, you know, there's there's plenty of space to throw here. I was so out of uh, I'd be haven't gone for the goblin throw by the looks of it. Yeah. Oh, so absolutely I would have I would have. Um I would have put on the left side, I don't know why. Let's see where the kick goes. Oh why we got a right anyway. Oh look. So good, so good. I would have put him on the left side there. I knew, I knew it was going left. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where the that's, what, that's why you're coaching me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess I would have had a throw back, just the throw back there, like nine squares back or something. And then the troll here, blitzer there, goblin there, and then the blitzer just blocks him on two dice for a push. And then you can you could have handed off to the goblin, moved the troll one forward, thrown it, no players nearby. That would have been a decent shot at one turning. Now this setup actually works pretty great with a short kick and a riot, so there's there's half a chance here. Yeah. Got a little lucky there. Though not much of a, it's more maximizing blocks than pushing forward, isn't it? I think this was the turn to play a little risky to try to get some forward movement. Yeah. Freed up him. Would have moved. Like to see receivers down first because you know he's 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 only working eight times out of nine, isn't it? And then I would have held it with the air thrower. 
you know, because potatoing here, it's just too easy for him to hit you, isn't it? There's there's no way you can you can shield him. Whereas if your thrower had kept it here, say, or here, one of these two squares, you could have run down the three you could have run down all three receivers in like random places. Uh Double one. Double one into death is a bit unlucky, isn't it? <laughs> Holy shit. You get used to it every while. That's why it, who said uh, Adonis Chalice was like, the best thing is Russell Horns, two heads Gabo. That's what yeah. happens to my Russell Horns, two heads Gabo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Double one into death. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, if, if you'd move, say, like, a goblin here, lineman here, goblin here, and then you have the ball back here, then you know he's got a he's got a blitz one mark the others and then there's a shot for you to do a passing play there, whereas he, the potato he's going to three dice it with block isn't he which is yeah I was trying to I guess I was just trying to I don't know tie up the players hope for a dodge out or something I don't know it's a desperate play yeah but I mean even there he could, it's just a two die two die to free him up if you based him with a goblin he still gets three yeah, dice without block and he'll he'll take the ball down because if he gets the ball down you're probably not going to score. Yeah. He didn't make it three dice. Got the power anyway. <laughs> They're the sort of things that grinds my gears. When people do that against me, I'm like, you could have made it three. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear, that's not good, Pedro Jack. Yeah, the amazing penalty kick animation. So, is there a chance to score here? Um, it would necessitate chaining this goblin forward one square. So, maybe? Like, maybe it's possible to score. It's obviously really difficult. But, this goblin could have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, GFI. Yeah, it's impossible. He's got no players. <laughs> All right, it's not possible. Mm, I guess it's possible in that you could have thrown the goblin, and then the other goblin could have picked it up and passed and handed it off to him. So yeah, you could have thrown this goblin that was next to the troll, landed about here or something. This goblin could have picked it up, handed it off to him. But I mean, obviously low odds. Probably better to punch somebody. Yeah, so poor half overall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the best. Um, but I think it was—it was—it wasn't bad, really. Like it was just—I would say it was just not good enough, rather than bad. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, yeah. It wasn't—it wasn't horrific. It wasn't, you know, awful things like one dices and stuff, and like like his was awful making the two dice over the three dice. That's just—that's just horrible. There's no excuse for that. The, 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 he didn't do anything with the beast man. He just made it a, made it a two dice into a three dice. That's just things like that are horrible. I guess not setting up for the gob the troll throw. I mean, you could go for more attrition, but I would have settled for the goblin throw. Yeah. Michael does exactly yeah, the same so. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it doesn't really make sense for me to uh, try to make that like six plus dodge into a, a surf and then uh, next turn worry about attrition. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh... So, I mean, obviously, him putting five guys in the LOS is just dumb. <laughs> it's just shit and wrong. <laughs> I don't think he should have his block guys on the LOS either. Um, especially as they're not even, it's not being used defensively. But yeah, blocking, block, block. I mean, maybe you could have, uh, maybe you could have set up a bit more against a perfect defense or a blitz. You know, set up the goblins one square back and then move them in for the assist uh, against the warriors. It would have made your turn more inefficient, but then also a bit safer against blitz or perfect yeah. defense. I mean, that's Excellent. marginal. Gain two dice without block instead of he's he's got the guy there you know just make it with block. 
<laughs> make it three die. If you ever, if you ever have a block guy <laughs> with horns, and you're playing against stunties, make sure you get an assist and just make it three dice. It's so easy to make it three dice. Yeah, but it's not hard to do. Yeah. That's that's been the poorest thing for, from him, I think. He's just yeah, not making. Yeah, he could have. Yeah, he could have the the guy he blitzed with. He could use that as the assist, and then three dice would block with the guy who moved in afterwards. It'd have been pretty yeah. easy to kill him. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's been his, and he's he's consistently throughout the matches he's made that play as well. So yeah. Right. So then then came the troll block here. So before the troll block, you've got to think one in nine when you turn. No reroll available. I actually think I like I like the thrower being deep here because because he's based up. It's hard for you to get protection for him. So keeping right. him deep isn't so bad. You can wait for him to move somebody in and then maybe pick them off and move up the cage. So maybe maybe this goblin could have like moved down here or something. But yeah, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, if you don't have horns, putting two assists in against stunties is probably worth it for the knockdown chance. Um but it's a much greater positional cost, isn't it, for putting in two assists. And obviously, yeah. in this, in this right, case, it in paid off. With the ball being so far back, it wasn't. He wasn't giving up much, even if he didn't have horns. Yeah. It was like similar to the against the Skaven, like you said, where it was like it was nothing for him to commit that many people to kill that skink. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, moved it up. So this tempts him into a bit of a putting pressure on here. But I guess yeah. I guess moving it was pretty safe. But I mean, this could. One, two. Going crazy on the fouls. Did you get a bribe? Oh, yeah, got a bribe. I think I did. Yeah. So, so yeah, filing's absolutely fine then once you got a bribe there. This is a dodge and two GFIs from hit the ball. So, I think I would have kept him, you know, moved him up a little bit, but kept him safe. I, would, I wouldn't mind hanging back with him a little bit. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't have left him where he was when I said I'd keep him back. But yeah, I would have I would have counted the squares to make sure this play wasn't possible. I didn't go for it, he just went to hit the goblin. But he can base the ball after the pow, and he could have also could have just dodged through and two dice the ball. Um, and like while I don't think dodging around dodging in two GFIs to hit would have been that good a play, it's it's something that you still don't want to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that this did this did leave a storm vermin free. Well not storm vermin, are they? They're scaven scaven blitzers. Needs to scave and blitz a free, and then now you can cage up. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Get two dice on him. And then two dice on him, yeah. I think maybe he's out of concentrating more on protecting the ball a bit. But. I guess it's mm, relatively. Mm, no, it's a bit dicey, isn't it now? Bit dicey. I would have. I would have liked to have kept these two players out, and maybe, maybe he's actually now. Oh, I don't, it's hard. It's hard to say, isn't it? It's hard to say because I should have paused it because the action's moving. I would have tried to have got some kind of cage around the ball, but just because because you came up last turn and he he you know based it, you've got to blitz this guy. I mean that's absolutely no questions asked. You've got to blitz him. Um, maybe and also where your goblin was, I think he was basing both. So with a push, you couldn't free up the goblin. Um, Man, tough isn't it? It's tough. Tough thing. Maybe I would have. Uh, I would have. I would. Have, I would have certainly tried to cage the ball. I. I don't know exactly how. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I could have prevented the uh, dodge out. Oh god. Um, to a two die. I'm not sure. I could. I could. Not there. Um, I mean, what you've got here is you've got this troll move forward, didn't he? And. Uh, yeah, so I, th yeah. I think if you didn't move the troll and you just kept the ball here, maybe you could have tried goblin dodge outs or something. But it's really, really hard to protect the ball now. Maybe you could have just gone backwards again, but yeah. then you tempted him in. <laughs> I tried that one die because I was like, oh crap, they can just bust this corner open really easy. And I just yeah. was... skull skull uh, cares. Yeah, you can't really do anything like that because, yeah, you saw it and then had to protect the ball, yeah. Yeah, so I probably could have played this a lot better. Yeah, that that seemed a that seemed a poor turn. Um, yeah, basically, ball ball security was ignored until it was too late, wasn't it? That that was what happened yeah. there. It should have really that was a real thinking turn to think how can I uh, 
How can I blitz him, and then how do I get his I will say, play? with all this in mind, I somehow tied one to one this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because this guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is. Oh, guys, how have you. I, now, now I'm struggling to understand how this has happened. He's just cast the. Well, not effectively cast the troll. This is now. I mean, this is really hard now, isn't it? Two dice with block. A one dice blitz. Oh, God. I mean, this is where Fash is, Fash is losing his mind at this point, isn't it? These moves aren't safe. Oh, wow. Okay, but yeah, I mean, you, you're up what, shit what creek. What could I have done there? I really don't know. I mean, you're up shit creek there. I think. Wow. I think maybe he's uh, maybe he's just do the two dice. You know, dodge out to two dice with this lineman. But then the dodge out to three plus anyway, so you might as well just do a one dice. So it's tough. I'm, I think I would have dodged him out at the end that lineman because. He's just getting punched two dice block with block for free, isn't he? I mean, that's that's nightmare scenario, just giving up a two dice block. They just click block. You know, that's the worst. Yeah. Like, it's uh, it's okay if... It's it's bad if they've got to bring in an assist to two dice block you. Then it's almost free. But when, when you're just ending your turn, getting blocked on two dice, that's horrible. Nightmare scenario. Yeah. So yeah, I unless, think I would have dodged unless, him out of the screen. You know, the yeah, because if the dodge fail there, there's still not much risk, or same amount of risk on the ball, anyways, with the yeah. fail or... Yeah, sense, because yeah. Cause all he's doing is blocking this stone vermin, and then he's hitting the ball. So, yep. yeah, I mean, obviously sometimes you've got to just do it, but um, it's it's a heavy... It's with a heavy heart that you just allow somebody to just get two dice straight off the bat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they didn't have block, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been as bad. But oh, did that guy have to stand up? Oh, right. Oh, that guy had to stand up next to the storm vermin. Oh, so that wasn't so bad. So he just made the dodge. All right, fair to his then. In that case, you might have lost something by dodging. In fact, you would have definitely lost something. So actually, I didn't realize this this beast man had to stand up. So in that case, you might have lost something by doing the dodge. However, um, you failing the dodge is thirty three percent. Him failing to knock you down by blocking you with a warrior is twenty five percent. So you still, it's still right to make that high risk play. It is, it really is high risk with not a high reward, because you know, thirty three percent of the time you just leave, leave these guys open. He would have blocked him, and then he would have yeah. just got a straight two dice on the ball. But he's going to yeah, get like seventy five percent of the time anyway. So you, yeah. So that's the thing. There's times when, you know, like. Again, like you, you might have to make two GFIs without a reroll, because the alternative is the other guy has to make two GFIs to hit you, but he's got a reroll and he's got block and he's just going to knock you over, isn't he? Nine times out of ten. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. No, yeah. oh, that was disappointing, wasn't it? That could have nearly, nearly one, two, three, four, five, six. That would have nearly, that would have been really made it pretty much safe making that dodge. That was unlucky. That wasn't uh, that wasn't actually unlucky dodge. So now he can now again no uh, he can two dice with block. I I got oh my god I've got a feeling he's just gonna make an irrelevant GFI. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I've got a feeling he's gonna blitz with a guy on the floor next to him. He is, you know, like that's that's terrible. That's that's just terrible, you know. He had the block guy. He's got the block guy here. He can go five, block him, knock him down. That's just awful blocking without block, isn't it? That's just he, he gets. He would have knocked him down. He rolled the board down. You know? <laughs> um, arguably, he gets a better push direction doing it that way, but. You know, it's not worth it, is it? Blocking without block. Not good. One dice block to to be able to dodge. <laughs> I mean, I think it's the right play, but it's just it's just horrible having to do it, isn't it? Fucking horrible having to do it. I would have thought there about rather than doing the dodge out. I would have thought about dodging out with a goblin. So that you would have had uh, the assist, 
and then the other goblin could have blocked. So then it's obviously it adds an eight out of nine chance of failure. But if if that fails, ah, I guess you've got, you've only got the one turn after this anyway. So it would have it would have increased the overall likelihood of failure. However, your failure state would have been much better if you fail the one dice block from the goblin. But they're not really because you're just getting two dice blocked. So no, probably just going going ham for the the dodge was probably the right play. Did you GFI? Could you have GFI'd? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, maybe doing the GFIs would have been the play. No, he hasn't got rerolls, has he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can't hit with him. He's got a dodge on, hasn't he? There two dice here. No, he doesn't. There's a storm vermin there. The storm vermin's standing on him on my screen. <laughs> so yeah, he didn't need GFIs. But that would have been the situation where if he had a guy here, um, then you, you would have been right to go for the GFIs because you know you can't just rely on the other person failing. A lot of times people will say, "Let the other person roll the dice," and it's it's really you know it's really not always the right play, is it? It is just the percentages ultimately. Yeah. Wow, wow, yeah, you got you got let off the hook there. Him blocking, blocking without block, and then not taking the board down. He could have just taken the board down there. Like, I would have taken the board down if I wasn't able to block with block, and I had made the block without the block guy. I would have just taken the board down there. Yeah, yeah. So that was an <laughs> ugly game overall. Poorly played by both guys. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was. So, I, sorry to uh, have your viewers watch that, but <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, there's no snobbery, is there? Well, there is, but I don't think there should be any snobbery. I mean, it's the the you know. I think the stream is definitely for streaming. YouTube is mostly for people who who aren't experts, isn't it? To watch it and like you know pick it up and stuff. So I don't like. I don't like, you know, I think while fascist elitism is funny, I think it's, I think, it, you know, if you it's being genuine, it's not very helpful, is it? Um, you know, so, I mean, he could have made three dice blocks with block all day long. And he, yep. uh, he really, he really shouldn't have, he really shouldn't have been. And, and then to hit, when he had... You know, it was just literally, he was he didn't have to make a GFI to blitz the ball with block. He just had the blitz on the ball with block, and he, he, he made it without block. And I, just because he was closer, I think that's all it was. And I, I thought, you know, with watching this whole game, I just felt he was going to do that just because he was closer. <laughs> horrible, horrible play by him. Really, really, really terrible. Um, I, I, I don't think yours was was honestly terrible in the first half. But, yeah, the the... the the drive slipped away, didn't it? It definitely slipped yeah. away. And, and and you know, your team was was worse, really. I mean, he had four block, so it wasn't so much of a chaos team anymore. And Underworld are very poor at low TV. So, you know, and it took a lot of, took the troll out and everything and took a lot of Kaz overall. So, yeah, not it's no, no shame in drawing that one. <laughs> yeah. I think this Underworld team, I am... Um... Oh four no, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've had favorable matchups in a lot of them, like Ricky Kislev or Ricky Nurgle. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Like to draw, I guess. Okay, so I just need to work on um, screening. Uh, think about positioning after the turn. Don't just throw random assists out there. Think about where the player is going to line up afterwards. Um, and uh, yes, safe moves first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, de definitely. And uh, and also think about like uh, oh, there's no there's no pitch to look on. But you know if you've got say like a guy here and a guy here and a guy here and this guy's going to make the block here. You know think about if the furthest guy can get there, and then this guy could go and do something else. You know rather than just bringing the, the closest guy. I know that guy took the closest guy when it was horrible, but you know. I kind of think if I just need a person, some if I need a player in a square, I'll try and use the one that moves the furthest to get there, so that I've got more options with the other guys and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. That's kind of similar to thinking about where the end of your turn will be. That's that's why I said it then. Um, so, thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>